Hi guys, it's Angie the Craft NATO, and today we are going to do something different. We are going to do something that is actually one of the things that prompted me um, to actually start a YouTube channel uh, four months ago. I can't believe it's already been four months that I've been doing this. It's been a blast. I've had a really good time doing it. One of the things that I was really big into at that time, and I've kind of gotten away from it, and I just had the little bug to, to do it, to work on it today, and I thought, what better time to make a video than right now when I'm feeling on like working on it. But one of the things that prompted me to start the YouTube channel was I was really into punch needle. Punch needle is a form of embroidery where you use a special type of needle tool and I'll show you all that in just a second. Um, and you um, embroider. And there are two different um, mediums, I guess, two different types that you can use and um, two different ways that you can do each one. So I'm just going to give you the, the reason why it prompted me to want to start a YouTube channel and to talk about this is because when I first started with Punch Needle, I had a really difficult time finding anything on YouTube that was for absolute beginners and that went through it um, from a very beginner's standpoint. So hopefully I can illustrate to you today um, just how easy it can be. Now these kits that you can buy, um, I've purchased them from Amazon, a lot of them, and I've also purchased some kits from Etsy. Um, the purchase, the kits that you get from Amazon, a lot of times if you put in, you know, beginner punch needle kit, you're going to get everything that you need to, uh, to do the craft. You're going to get your needle, you're going to get your yarn or thread, you're going to get your monk's cloth or weaver's cloth, you're going to get your hoop, you're going to get the instructions, a pre-printed, um, the, the, design is going to be pre-printed on the fabric, etc. If you go the Etsy route, you got to be a little bit careful. Um, a lot of those are more specialty type things and they're assuming that you know a little bit about punch needle and that you have some of the tools already. So you got to be a little bit more careful with that. The one that I'm going to demonstrate today is probably the easier of the two mediums. So as I was mentioning, there's two, two mediums you can use uh, when you punch needle. The first is probably the more difficult and a little bit more advanced, a little bit more finicky to work with. And that is using um, weaver's cloth and floss. So embroidery floss, cross stitch floss uh, that you would, you would use for cross stitch and embroidery. So, and the tool that you use is a lot, then a lot smaller. So this is an example of one of, that I'm working on for my great nephew, um, just a cute little monkey. And this is one that is using embroidery floss on weaver's cloth. And this is, on the contrary, one that I've finished. And this is using what's called monk's cloth. So you can see that it has a higher um, weave or a, actually a lower weave density. And uh, you can you know definitely see the, um, the holes, kind of like a, almost looks like an Ada cloth, but it's a lot softer than Ada. If you're familiar with cross stitch, um, you know what Ada cloth is, but you can see the you can see the openings in the squares, whereas with the weaver's cloth, it's it's more like a linen, more like a, you know, a tightly knit uh, cotton or linen material. Um, and with the uh, one that you use with the weaver's cloth, I'm sorry, with the monk's cloth, the thicker one, you actually use yarn. You don't use floss, you use yarn. So it's not going to be, it's not always going to be delineated in the item description. You're going to have to look a little bit at the um, item when you're searching for it um, on Amazon or Etsy or anywhere else that you can find. I think AliExpress has some of these kits. Some of your budget-friendly diamond painting sites have these kits like Fancells and GBFKE 
and FG Normal and places like that, you can find some a limited supply. And I think they're mostly gonna be these with the yarn with the uh, monk's cloth. And that's what we're gonna work with today because that's a little bit more beginner friendly. So um, also in each, in each, uh, for each medium, there are two ways to work on a punch needle kit. This way is your working side, so the side that has your pattern printed on it, the working side is your good side. So the working side of your fabric is going to be the finished side of the fabric. So as you're working, um, this becomes what is the finish. And it, it's more of a smooth um, embroidery look where as opposed to this is just an example of another one that I'm working on um, using um, the floss and the weaver's cloth. Um, this is the working side of the fabric, but you can tell that that does not look very good. This is the actually going to be the good side of it. So the design is going to look like like this is what it's going to look like when it's finished. And you can see that so the good side, the finished side, I should say, is I, I have a hard time with that good side, bad side, finished side, working side. So forgive me if I transpose or if I use those interchangeably. I'll try to always say uh, working side, finished side. Sometimes your working side is your finished side. So anyway, um, but you can see that they're more like the tufts of it are the good side. So your working side is actually your bad side. So this is the side you're working from. And this is the side that's going to be your um, finished side. And this is all going to, once I get the other colors in there, these little tufts are going to, um, are going to come together in a small grouping and it's going to, and it's going to look like that. So those black tufts that you see, those are actually just those little black dots on that rooster. And once the rest of the colors get filled in there, it will, it'll uh, squish together and it'll uh, even out. Now, this isn't my favorite way to do it. Um, I tend to prefer where your working side is your good side. I just like the look of it better. But I've done a piece uh, for my mother-in-law for Christmas last year from a design that I got from Etsy that turned of a, of a Santa and a, a reindeer and it turned out absolutely beautiful. So, you know, they can be beautiful. I'm not sure about the one I'm working on right now. I. I don't know about the colors in it, I think is what my deal is with that one. But anyway, so that is using, that, that's using floss. So the process is the same, the tool is the same, but on a smaller scale for using floss, obviously, than for using yarn. So this is a kit that I got. It came with two designs. I've already worked up one of the designs. So this is what we're gonna work on is one of the ones using the monk's cloth and the yarn because it's a, it works up faster because yarn is fatter than floss and so it takes less stitches to get the coverage that you need. And uh, it's just a little bit, it's just a little easier to work with for a beginner. So the kit came with two, everything you need to complete two designs. This is one that I've already finished. It comes with the hoop, comes with the tool, comes with all of your, all of your yarn, everything you need. It comes with a needle threader and it actually, and it comes with a tapestry needle. So I'm going to just reach in here and pull out. This is, now you can buy aftermarket punch needle who, or, uh, tools that are probably a much better quality than the ones that come in these kits. I haven't found that I've needed to do that. Um, not for these yarn kits. For the other kits, I did buy a better tool. This is the tool that you're going to use. Basically, it is a 
um, it's just a hollow tube that's tapered with a hole at the end. And you also get, like I said, a tapestry needle and a um, uh, thread threader, needle threader. You're not going to use this kind of needle threader for this, though. Then we've got our comes with directions. They all are going to come with directions. Um, they're a little bit, you know, you can, you can, you can use them. You can get by using them. I found that it was a lot easier for me to watch a video. So let's just get right into it. And I'm just going to give you guys a brief tutorial of how to do this. The one thing that's very, very important when you're working with punch needle is you want to make sure that your fabric is as taut as possible within the frame. So when you're working with punch needle, you don't want to use just a standard wooden bam or bamboo cross stitch hoop. You want to use one of these interlocking plastic hoops um, or Morgan hoop, they're called. Like I said, most of the, all of the beginner kits are going to come with a hoop. And this is the design that we're going to be working on. So this one is very, very simple. And you're going to place your bottom hoop down. I shouldn't be doing this on my lap. Kind of try to center the ring around the ring that's on there. Place your top hoop over top, make sure that you get into the grooves, and then you're going to pull. And you want to try to make sure that this stays even, especially if this is something that you're going to leave in this frame for display purposes. If you're going to leave this in this hoop, which I'm not, I have some display hoops um, that I'll use once I'm finished but you really want to pull this. You want to pull this as tightly as you possibly can. So you're going to go around and give it a really good tug until it doesn't have any more give to it on all sides. And you can see that I don't have this in here very straight, but like I said, I'm not going to leave it in this hoop, so I'm not too concerned that this isn't very straight. Go ahead and tighten it up. And then you want to tug it again. You don't want there to be any give whatsoever in this. You want it to be what they call drum tight. So you can hear that drum tight. Make sure this is this is tightened as tightly as you can possibly screw it. Sometimes I even have Jeff tighten it for me. This is really, really tight. I want to make sure there's absolutely no give there, and there is not. So I've got that as tight as I can, as I can do it. Now, a general rule of thumb when you're starting this is you want to start with a color that has the least amount showing. So you're going to start with your um, with your least color, which is going to be this stem color. So I just happened to see that this is the color that's going to correspond with the stem. Let me grab that out of the package. Now, this is going to become a little bit more evident and a little bit more clear um, and understandable when we get into it. But I just want to show you 
on here that you can do several different types of, not several, but a couple different types of stitches. It's all the same stitch, but you can give it a little bit different look depending on how you decide to stitch it. So for example, you can see the way that I stitched the petals on this flower are so that I was working with my, my working side was my good side. But for the center of this flower, I did it so that the working side was not the good side. The working side is not the finished side. On this petals on this flower, I decided to go back and forth rather than lengthwise in you know embroidery type stitches. I decided to go back and forth working with my uh, working side as my good side. I did the same thing and made my working side not my good side with the center of this flower and the center of this flower and with these flowers here. So you can do a couple of different things to change the way that this looks. I haven't decided yet, but that's a little bit more advanced. You know, we'll get into that. We're gonna, for this one, I think what we'll do is we'll make the centers of these flowers pop out and we'll do the leaves of the flowers just standard and we'll do the stems standard. And I might even try to do a little bit of a stem stitch, or I'm mean, sorry, a leaf stitch, like you would do in normal embroidery on these leaves. We'll see, we'll see how, we'll see how it goes. So the probably most uh, thing you might have trouble with, with the most annoying part of punch needle is actually threading the hook. And it's annoying because it's also annoying how they put the, these threads on here or these this yarn on here. Got it. All right. Now, this kit here, I don't love and I don't love the colors and the designs aren't, you know, something that I'm really really into. I just chose it because I thought it would be a good one um, because there were two there were two designs in this kit. I thought I could work one up to be able to um, show you an example of what it looks like when it's finished. And then I'd have one to work up with you um, to show you how you do it. So with your kit, you get this very long threader. And this is, you, I've lost so many of these. They're easy to lose, um, but this is, it, it, very important part of this. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this threader, you're going to stick it into the uh, end of your needle all the way up through so it comes out the other end. Take your yarn and put it through and then pull it all the way through to the end until it comes out. But you're not done. You've got a hole in the bottom of your needle. You want to stick your needle threader through this hole. Come on. And then stick your yarn through that threader again. And pull it through. So now you have your yarns coming through the end of your needle, coming through the barrel of your needle, and then coming through the hole at the bottom of your needle or the top of your needle. Now it's important to, um, when you're starting, it's important to make sure that you are orienting your needle the proper way. So you always want to work in the direction that your beveled end is going. So when you insert your needle, this is a little difficult from this uh, position to get this in here to show you. You wanna insert it to where the beveled part is pointing forward. I'm going to show you how to, it's real easy when you, when you mess up, it's real easy to correct your mistakes. So when you start, you'll notice there's a guard here on your needle. 
Um, as you get into more and more advanced designs, you can remove that guard to make your tufts longer or shorter. We're not going to worry about that, any of that for right now. This is just going to be the absolute beginning. So you want to make sure that you're leaving yourself a big enough tail here because when you push down, you're going to be pushing through to that guard. So you want to make sure that your tail is long enough. So leave yourself, I don't know, for to start out with, just to be safe, about a three inch tail. Then you're going to go to your, your fabric and you're going to insert at the beginning of the pattern. Now you want to flip it over carefully and pull that tail out the bottom because you don't want the bottom hanging out of your finished end. Where are you, Mr. Tail? And then you can kind of pull it back through so you don't have quite so much hanging there. Now making sure that your beveled end is facing upwards towards the direction that you're working, you're gonna go up about five holes and you're gonna insert again all the way down to the guard. Come up about five holes, insert all the way down to the guard. Now what I like to do is I like to spin my work. When you come to do your next row, you want to go halfway between your first your where your first stitch was. So in other words, you don't want your stitches to keep going in at the same level. So I'm going to go about halfway, come up, just drag your needle across the top of the fabric. Don't try not to lift your needle up off of the fabric. Just lightly lift it, lightly scrape it across the top. Then I'm going to spin, come back, make sure when I lift it up, I'm making sure my beveled end is staying in the direction that I'm working. I'm going to go up halfway again. And you want to keep it very close. You want to almost be touching um, the stitch next to it. Come up, go in again, come up, go halfway, come up, and down to the end. Now it's up to you to decide how close you make those stitches as far as you know, there's no set. You just want to make sure that you're getting full coverage of your um, pad of your design. And then I'm going to go ahead and give it one more that way because it comes down at an angle. And one more that way. Okay, so now we've completed that little section. That's all we had to complete for that first stem. So we need to cut our thread. So we're going to flip the work over, grab a pair of uh, scissors, and just slide your scissors in between the yarn and the um, and the needle and then clip it and then pull your needle out. Okay, and you've done your first section. Now let's say, and we've kept our, ne our needle threaded, which is, you might not always be able to do that at first, but it's not that big of a deal to thread it again. So let's try this again and let's say we screw up. So I'm working and you can get really fast at this and then I'm working and then I decide, oh, that, I put that way too far apart. That, that looks horrible, that's not uniform at all. All you gotta do is just pull it out. Now you see there are some holes there in your monk's cloth. Take the tip of your needle 
because you've made your fabric so nice and taut on your hoop, you can just scrape that and it'll pop right back into shape and you can just start over. Very easy, very easy to do. So let's, um, let's go ahead and change colors and let's do the tuft of, let, I, I wanna show you what it looks like. There are two different ways you can do it if you are working, if like I'm doing this, gonna do this mixed to where I'm gonna have the tufts as my um, good side for the middle of these flowers. So sometimes this can be the good side. And I'm gonna show you how I work that. Now, there's two ways you could do this. You could take this out of the hoop and flip the fabric around. Or you can just work from the back. Just because it's such a small area and it's just a circle and it's nothing intricate, I'm just gonna work from the back. Fly. Uh, again, a fly. I, I would swear to God, this, the flies are driving me absolutely insane. Every time I open the door, one comes in. It's so annoying. So I'm going to take that out and we're going to grab this pink and we're going to do, which this is a hideous color pink. It's just absolutely obnoxious. Um, like I said, these aren't designs that I necessarily love. I just thought that these would be easy to show you um, how to get started with punch needle. These were a couple of real easy, um, easy patterns. So we'll get out our threader again and I'll show you again how that works because that can be a little tricky. So we're gonna take the threader, stick it up through the barrel of the needle all the way through to the end. Stick our thread or our yarn through pull it all the way through. Then we're gonna stick our threader through the eye of the needle from the back. Grab our yarn. And pull it through. And voila, our needle is threaded. So it's a good idea to use, just because threading the needle is a little bit cumbersome, it's a good idea to do everything um, that you're gonna do in one color, you know, while you've got that color threaded. We didn't do that just because I wanna show you the other, other way of doing this. So I'm just gonna work from the back. I'm gonna find, and we're using, You can't really see what I'm doing, can you? I'm gonna to try to angle this so you can see. I should not have been doing this from the... So I'm working from the back. And you just wanna make sure that you've got full coverage. And that sound is perfectly fine. You're not hurting anything. And that's how quickly you can do this. And some of these, you can really, really find some amazing designs on Etsy, some amazing patterns. Um, you can get PDF patterns um, once you've got all your tools and buy, you know, just the, um, the monk's cloth or weaver's cloth. You can make your own patterns. It's really easy to make your own patterns. Just if you're a little bit artistic or crafty, it's nothing to draw a design. Now, the only thing... One thing to keep in mind is the only thing keeping your stitches in there. And we just did that entire, we just did that entire uh, center of that flower. So I'm going to come back to the back. 
put my yarn. And voila, we've done the center tuft of that flower. Now, the one thing to keep in mind is as you're doing that, the only thing holding your stitches in is the tension of the material against your yarn. So when you're working, one thing you want to be always mindful of is that you are you're not pulling your 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 yarn. Make sure that you have a good loose amount of yarn because if your yarn starts pulling, then you're going to have a problem and your um your stitches are going to start to uh your stitches will start to come out. So now for the petals that are this pink, since we've already got this pink loaded up, we're going to start and we're now we're working the other way. So we're going to pull this through so that our tail is on the bad side. And we're going to make sure that our bevel is pointed forward. We're going to go up about five holes worth or six centimeters if you wanted to count it you can now you have a design choice that you want to make do you want to follow the outline and then fill in or do you want to just go up and down um across across the pattern i think i'm going to go just up and down across the pattern so again we're going to go to halfway between so that our insert points aren't all the same turn it around and just make sure that your yarn is free flowing and is not going to get i'm sorry if that was out of frame when i was doing that let's do it let's do another row Make sure that you've got enough, you've got ample yarn hanging loose so that it's not pulling. Now you can see that those two lines that I just made are not only a little bit far apart, but also I put my insert points at exactly the same place and I don't like that. So what I can do is I could take it out and do it over or I can just do another line there. I'm going to go ahead and go halfway. And don't be afraid to really, if you've got to really ram it in there, don't be afraid to do that. It's fine. Now you want to make sure that you don't have too many stitches at any um, certain point just because um, it can end up pulling and making your uh, piece look uneven but you can see that this is a craft again these are not very good examples of how beautiful it can actually be these can actually be really beautiful um, but you can see that these work up really quickly and you can really come up with a beautiful piece of art in just a short amount of time just you know a few, matter of a few hours so that is punch needle for absolute beginners um, I hope that you found it interesting and or helpful uh, if you have any questions um, feel free to leave them down in the comment section and I will get back with you as soon as I can and if you have any um, further questions or you'd like to know a little bit more about Punch Needle, I'd be more than happy to share my knowledge there. Um, and I would be more than happy to show some of my other pieces uh, that I've done or that I, that I have worked on um, or to show you uh, a project using floss, a little, maybe a little bit more intricate. Um, and beautiful of a project using floss. I have one in mind that I wouldn't mind sharing. Um, so if that's something you think you might be interested in, I would love to um, share that and we could even do it as sort of a whip and chat. 
Um, I could work on that while I while I chat with you guys because once you get the hang of it, there's really not much. I mean, there's not any other stitches involved. Um, you're just basically in and out with your punch needle tool. And I want to get some more yarn here, so I'm not. But that said, now I'm into this, and now I'm probably going to work on this for uh, until it's done. Um, so thank you for hanging out with me, and I will talk to you guys all in my next video. Have a great day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.